Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, whenever you're listening. This is Davisville on KDRT-LP, 95.7 FM in Davis, California. We live at kdrt.org online. I'm Bill Buchanan. I'm the host. Thank you for tuning in. Housing is an interesting story in Davis. It involves the community, shapes the community, really. It involves business, it involves money, it influences local politics, and it also reflects what we all want as individuals in terms of how we live, how we'd like to live, and how we experience the town. In May, two months after the COVID-19 pandemic started, we talked with Davis real estate expert Steve Boschkin on local housing and trends. And now that the summer of this strange year is over, we'll talk today about what's happened since spring in terms of prices, rental vacancies, and more and maybe understand what's happening a little better. And I'm happy to say too that uh, Steve is back with us today, also his wife, Kit Boschkin. Uh, together they have a variety of uh, real estate properties and businesses and such in town. She's more expert on the rental side, Steve more on the sales side. Steve and Kit, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you, Bill, look forward to this conversation. Thank you. So we do know a few things that we didn't know in May. For example, the University of California, Davis, is estimating that 23 to 25,000 of its students will be, on, be here in some form this fall, which is to say they're not living at home, that they're gonna be in Davis, or maybe they're living in Dixon or Woodland or something like that, even though only a handful of classes will occur in person. So most of its students will be around here or nearby. Uh, Longer term, there are signs that the University of California anticipates teaching most of its classes remotely through June 2021. Of course, it's early, things can change, but uh, that's sort of an early take on it. So what I'd like to ask uh, really both of you, I'd like to mention a few categories and then ask you what the situation is in Davis this fall. And Steve, let's start with home sales and home prices. Okay, so right now there are 51 active homes, which is very, very low. Um, We're probably easily 50% of what we would normally have uh, this time of year for inventory, which is causing problems in and of itself because, as you know, you know, if you're going to sell a home because you're going to move into a new one, you don't want to pull the trigger to sell yours and end up homeless. So that's causing a lot of, you know, issues in the market, which is also driving prices up. You know, the supply and demand of just lack of housing, people are putting multiple offers uh, or sellers are getting multiple offers oftentimes in um, if a home is priced correctly. So right now there are also 53 homes pending, uh, meaning they have an accepted offer. So you can see that they we have as many pending as we have for sale. And year to date, we have sold 316 homes. Um, so hmm. we are, you know, very, very close to a one month supply total of homes available on the market. So, so, so what, why do you suppose uh, people aren't selling? You know, it's a variety of reasons. I think one of the biggest things is the lack of housing for them to go to. You know, I think that that is a real concern to many buyers in the market. You would think that uh, the, you know, like student population, since they weren't coming, we didn't see as many out of area buyers at, you know, coming to purchase for their students. Uh, But we have seen quite a few of, you know, in Davis and Bay Area transplants coming to purchase homes. Well, if there is an inventory for them to buy, again, they're not, you know, the ones that are trying to move up or down in Davis are not going to, you know, pull that trigger. The, um, you know, the one, you know, glimmer of hope, so to speak, uh, in the next year or two is going to be when Bretton Woods comes online. That should free up some inventory, but, you know, that isn't fully approved yet. Uh, I believe they are uh, maybe it did this week, um, but I think so they're and, and that, that's, Okay, that, and that's the development up in the northwest part of town, up near the hospital? Uh, yeah, just to the west of uh, Sutter Davis, yeah. uh, north of Covell. Okay. And it is primarily aimed at the um, age in place generation. There's 80% of it is supposed to be of age. Um, I think it's 55 and older, but I don't know that there's a formal limit on it. But 
the idea that uh, Dave Terramino came up with for that project is that many of the seniors that live in Davis live in very large homes that they raise their kids in. They've right. lived in those homes for 30 plus years and they don't need a five bedroom, two story house anymore. They need a you know, yeah. two bedroom, single story, age in place, nice home. And so this is gonna free up quite a few resales. Ken, I'd like to get to rentals in just a minute, but one last question there. What you're describing about supply doesn't sound all that related to the pandemic. Is the pandemic affecting sales at all? I think where the pandemic is actually affecting sales had more to do with about the middle of March through the beginning of June, when people were so worried about, you know, touching any surface and that, you know, just going out in public would give them C-19. And, you know, yeah. we didn't know what it is. I mean, we have a whole bunch of rules now that are in place when we show a property. And when we uh, have a, a, other agents come into the home, we're still limited to how many people can go in at a time. We're by state law; we are not allowed to have open houses. Yeah, uh, there's you know there's a whole bunch of dynamics that were that are in place that we're being careful of, which you know it affects the market a bit. But I'm I'm thinking the overall lack of housing availability right now is really what's driving you know, the, the housing market right now. Okay. And, 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 and again, I, I don't want to dwell too long on it, but just, I mean, it sounds like even if not for the pandemic, supply might still be limited at this point and you'd still have similar conditions. That's unexpected. Yeah. Well, uh, we, go ahead. we were aiming think, for that going into the pandemic. We, this, this yeah. was going to happen whether or not the pandemic was here. Oh, sorry. The other, the other component of this that has really driven things uh, home is uh, the interest rates. I mean, right now we can get, you know, a 30 year fixed rate for two and a half percent. Well, and that's one of the strange things about housing is the price can go up, but the cost goes down or can go down if the loans are, because housing prices rising with unemployment as high as they are also seems very strange. Right. But you're saying that's driven by supply. Hey, Kit, let's talk about rentals. I mean, that's been actually a, a, a pretty big story in this town. Students were wondering, you know, you saw this on social media, they wanted to get out of leases because they thought if the classes are remote, they didn't want to necessarily be here. Didn't know if it was safe to be in a college town, I suppose. So what's the story with, with rents? Uh, what's the vacancy rate? Are rents up and or down or? That's an interesting question and how to, to go there. Rent wise, when the pandemic hit, we were just starting our renewal process and our re-renting process. So, a lot of the properties are at regular rent that we got rented before the pandemic hit. Um, at this point in time, yes, you're trying to find a rental. I just posted a rental that's a three bedroom, two bath available October 1st. I posted it on Tuesday, 2450, which is very reasonable for the city of Davis. I have yet to get one contact on it. So we're gonna have to lower the rent. The other thing to piggyback on what Steve said, this is a single family house. They bought it as an investment property just last year, I believe. And they're talking about putting it back on the market for sale. So, so those houses that didn't rent are also going to impact the sales market for people like this investor who said, I, I have no rent. I'm getting nothing coming in. I don't know if the university ever is going to be completely back in, especially not this ap academic year. So you might find more rental properties on the market because they're vacant. So yeah. that's going to impact the sale, excuse me, on the sales market. And that's going to impact the sales market as well. I can imagine you folks have some interesting discussions from the rental and the sales side back and forth with your, your specialties. Yeah. Uh, do you have a feel for what the story is in, in apartments, in multiple units? Uh, um, I don't manage apartments. So that's, okay. I, I, I'm not, up to date on that. However, I met with somebody who they ended up buying their son a, a unit to, to live in and they're trying to get out of their apartment complex lease. And according to that apartment complex, and I can't tell you how big it is, I just don't know how many units it has, but supposedly there's only three vacant units in the whole apartment complex. Now, my question to them is, does, does vacant mean nobody's living in it? but it's rented or 
what what is their vacancy number? Because as I said, these guys rented an apartment. Are they considered vacant or are they considered rented? Yeah, I, I agree with you on that question. And, and I think that goes to the heart of a, a question a lot of people have. I mean, it matters how many students are living in, in town on, on a variety of levels, uh, certainly right. for the economy, also in terms of, you know, if, if there is another surge in, in COVID, right. the number of people here matters, uh, you know. Um, and what's your definition of vacancy? Like I said, this no. unit is rented, they're paying rent on this apartment because they don't want anything bad for the credit. If you go to that apartment complex, are they gonna say, yes, we're 90% full, but they only have 50% of people living there? So did, did the two of you, do you have a sense just from your experience in the market? You know, Davis is famous for 1% rental vacancy rates for apartments and, and such. And uh, as you were talking about, the start of the cycle normally is what? February when people start to rent for the following year because you have to do that if you want to find a place. Correct. Obviously the, the pandemic disrupted all that, but you know, I get a sense, I haven't seen any numbers, but I guess I'd love to know what you guys think about this. I get a sense the vacancy rate in Davis, the real vacancy rate, not necessarily the, are they legally rented? Is there a check coming in? But people right. living in them kind of vacancy uh, is much higher than usual. Well, uh, Sterling, next to the post office on fifth that all came online that's 600 beds 600, 700 beds that all came online this year the university in west village has other ones coming online as well so i believe the vacancy rate if this was a normal year would have been higher just because we're having more properties come online yeah and uh, i would imagine next time that we come around in the cycle uh people might not be as eager to sign these leases months ahead of when, you know, there's the school year would start. Right. right. We don't know what's going to happen to the 2021, 22 school year. Yeah. So no, I don't think people are going to be signing leases in March like they have in the past because they don't know what's going to happen to the university announces. So what it, the it, next year is going to be. Okay. And I would imagine at some point in there, there's going to be a real kind of reshaping of, how people rent in town and when they rent and you know right and the other thing that's happened over the last couple of years is you're getting in a three bedroom unit you're getting five people because they want to pay less rent so they're doubling up now with c19 they're not going to want to double up so you might get only three people in a three bedroom which is what we had you know 10 15 years ago so that's going to impact the vacancy rate because now you're having more people wanting their own bedrooms you know, the one thing that i've heard about the vacancy rate uh in town was there was an item in the enterprise that talked about how the uh city i guess maybe it's the county would try to rent some apartments for uh homeless folks the idea right. of a place where they could live and the enterprise article said uh that the vacancy rate was high uh for davis didn't have a number and of course i was curious to know what it is but uh well, I don't think you can get a number just yet. One, you wouldn't have had the number anyway if we weren't in C-19. You still wouldn't have that number. You're still collecting that information because you do have leases that start maybe September 15th normally because the school doesn't start until September. So you, in any given year, you wouldn't have had those numbers anyway. And like I said before, you now have to define what the vacancy rate is. Again, do you go back to an apartment complex that maybe has 90% of people yeah. or units Physic physically having a lease on them, but they only have 40% of the people living there. Do you consider it vacant or not vacant if they're paying rent but not moved in? So uh, we are talking with Steve and Kit Boshkin, who are local real estate experts and property managers and brokers and all sorts of things involving real estate. I'm Bill Buchanan and this is Davisville on KDRT. Steve, maybe this is a question back for you. I've, I've heard, um, although for what you were saying, not many people are able to buy right now, but um, one of the waves that Davis has had over the year is sort of migrations from the Bay Area. People move here from the Bay Area, uh, we're not far from the Bay, and so on. Certainly, the big push to telecommuting, uh, I would think, might amplify that trend. I'm wondering what you're seeing. And also what I've heard, and this is just anecdotal, but you know, I know people in town that I talk to, 
And they say that um, houses that have space for personal recreation, pools, and so seem to be going better because the idea is that people want to have space in their homes to swim or to have a gym or something like that. So I guess that's kind of a two part question is one, who's buying? Is it the Bay Area migration kind of coming at us again? And then uh, is that true about sales? Are people looking for places to recreate? You know, it's interesting. The, um, I think you're accurate on, uh, we're seeing more people wanting pools than we've seen in the past. Typically, you get a buyer looking, either looking for specifically for a pool or they don't want to have anything to do with the pool because of the safety and maintenance issues of it. With C19, we're seeing more people want to have a garage in their gym, uh, sorry, a gym in their garage, a, you know, a potential for a pool or put a, or have one already in. And, you know, they're, they're prepping right now for staying home with the anticipation that this isn't going to end, you know, this year or maybe even next year, uh, the stay at home part. So, so that is one thing that's, you know, interesting in the buyer's um, searches have changed a, a little bit. We still get the, the families, of course, that say, you know, we don't want anything to do with the pool. pool. We have toddlers at home uh, or planning and starting family, whatever. We just don't want to deal with the maintenance, whatever it is. There's, there's still that group, but more people are looking for houses with pools. To your question about the Bay Area influence, um, we are seeing uh, an increase in the number of buyers moving this direction who in the past have telecommuted, uh, sorry, have commuted, and now they are telecommuting from home through Zoom or whatever. The, the change, though, that we're also seeing is that we're not getting as many Bay Area investors we're getting some still, but the Bay Area oftentimes are the ones that come in and buy, you know, the the, the multiple unit properties, the duplexes, fourplexes on up. And right now, because of the mortgage market, buying investment properties is very, very challenging to get financing for. So if you don't have all cash, and of course a lot of Bay Area people do have a lot of cash uh, to bring in, but if you don't have all cash, you're probably not getting financing. And one of the interesting things, I've sold quite a bit in the Bay Area this year, one of the interesting things I'm finding, in, and it's, tends, it's looking like it's a trend down there, is that any kind of investment homes down there are plummeting in price. Hmm. Um, be, with, between the um, the rental um, limitations on, you know, raising rents and getting, you know, evicting tenants and, and all that kind of stuff to just not being able to get financing, the investor buyers down there are, are stuck. They don't have an, a way to purchase those properties. So if you've got a, you know, a duplex or a triplex or fourplex in the Bay Area, and, you know, to some extent up here, if you want to get financing, you're, you're very limited on what your options are unless you have a lot of cash. Okay. Uh, we've got about, I don't know, seven, eight minutes left. A question for both of you. What other ways is the pandemic affecting? We've talked about rental, talked about supply, things like that. What haven't we talked about? Maybe ways that the pandemic is affecting uh, housing in town. Yeah, business in general, you know, has, has been down like in the downtown. So people's discretionary cash flow, that those that are affected, you know, directly by C-19. I think that the other thing that we haven't discussed, though, that has had a, a fairly big impact over the last few weeks has been the fires and the level of smoke and the and the air quality numbers that people just weren't willing for the last two or three weeks to go out of their house. Um, well, you so, know, and I, I, I'd wondered about that. Uh, you know, climate change is, anyone who knows this area knows we've had more severe smoky skies and fires in this area than we did before. Uh, is, is that affecting whether people want to move here? Yeah, it, well, I don't know about move here per se, because, you know, it affects pretty much the entire West Coast. 
Um, I suppose that there are some people that are leaving the West Coast. We did actually pick up a few uh, renters that who unfortunately lost their house uh, in houses in the uh, in the fires. Hmm. Um, and you know, it's a year to two if they if they're going to rebuild, it's a year to two before that's going to be able to happen at a, at pretty much a minimum. But I think most of the people that uh, we're seeing, you know, just kind of hunkered down for, you know, the last three to four weeks, uh, which kind of tended to make showings a little slower, but the housing sales still are, you know, are, we're, we're going. Okay. Also talking about the fires in the rental market, I showed a number, um, it was three rented to one of them um, from Travis Air Force Base because mm. the fires happened. And a lot of those people rented, they want to stay close to where they were before. So they rented a lot of the homes that were available in the Fairfield, Vallejo area. And those incoming Travis people don't have a place to live. And so they're moving out this way. And normally you don't get Travis, unless they're a doctor possibly, this far out. Yeah, just a little and farther than you want to drive most, most of the time. Right. So I chose three different groups a house that were all from Travis. Okay. The, uh, the interesting thing about Travis is it used to be that unless you were an officer, you were not allowed to live outside of the basically Vacaville Fairfield area. Those that are officers, the pilots, the doctors, the lawyers, whatever that are, that are work on Travis, they were free to go further. But, uh, and Davis was the, is their you know, go-to place. What Kit is alluding to is basically that now Travis has said, hey, we can't find you housing anywhere near base. You're free to go to Davis now. And so within we're seeing, reason, the within reason. Fine. So we're seeing a lot more of the Travis um, employees uh, coming here to live, even though it's more expensive. A couple of questions towards the end here. Um, do you expect lasting changes in rentals or housing from the pandemic and all the things related to that, the telecommuting and reimagining the idea of working from home, things like that. I absolutely do. Like I said before, the last couple of years, you were getting five people living in a three bedroom. You were getting people sharing bedrooms. I think the pandemic is going to put that on hold for a little while. They're not going to want to share rooms anymore. Okay. So that will impact um, rental markets. Also, the prices, if we're not going to get five people in a room and they can't split it up rent-wise that way, I think rents are going to go lower a little bit. Okay. So we can accommodate that adjustment. I think on the sales side, the interest rates, I think, are going to be the determining factor. I don't see interest rates climbing in the next year or so. I think we've got a long way to, to go, and this is the keeping interest rates low is the Fed's way of keeping the economy going right now while we have so much uncertainty. But at some point, we're going to start to see inflation. And as inflation rises, their mechanism to uh, lower the, inf you know, keeping inflation in check is to raise interest rates. Yeah. And that will have a cooling effect eventually on the housing market. But I'm not seeing in the, in the near term future um, that happening. I don't think it's going to be next year either. Once the, once we finally get a, a vaccine that, you know, people can trust, uh, it's still going to take six to nine months or more to roll out and get enough people vaccinated to make it work. And of course, yeah, the psychology of it, uh, perhaps is hard to predict too. I mean, I, I, I've wished I could go back and talk to people who survived the flu pandemic a uh, century ago and ask them what was it like 10, 15, 20 years later, things like that. A tough year for predictions, but uh, what do you think over the next year for Davis Housing? Um, any thoughts? Rents? Sales? I think it depends what the university does. It really does. Right now, they have not said they're not coming back for classes in January. That has not been announced. Cal State has announced it. UCs haven't. That's going to be a huge impact us as rental people are still holding on that little bit of hope that we just survive for October, November, December, and they're all going to be back in January. If they're not, 
we're going to have to play that game when that comes. And Steve, it sounds like the supply is more the question on that end. Yeah, I think I think we're going to see a, you know similar um, you know real estate sales next year. Pro it, it could go up a little bit the numbers because I think in Davis and specifically if Bretton Woods can get online and that trends you know those people start to make the move that are going to make the move into Bretton Wood um, and you know they they start to be able to buy they're going to put their houses on the market we're going to have more inventory and of course then you have your normal influx in and out of Davis anyway so we could see actually more sales I don't know that we're going to see prices you know soften a whole lot uh, there's just not as long as interest rates stay low and the inventory stays fairly tight it's going to be a, another year of so rents were, were down um sounds like somewhat over the year but uh what percentage are we up a year for, in terms of pricing i believe this year we're up between four and five percent from last year at the same time it, it's it that's really a hard number to pinpoint right now because we had you know, two and a half months uh, where almost nothing was selling because nobody would go out of their house. And so, you know, then things have kind of roared back. Um, it's still limited on getting people in, but looking forward for the next uh, year, I'm seeing that there, you know, I'm seeing that we're going to be having probably a very similar uh, gain again in, in, you know, in values. We're, um, you know, assuming that interest rates aren't going to be going anywhere. Yeah. And we're assuming that some other, you know, pandemic doesn't join us. And, you know, and the interesting thing is construction costs continue to go up faster than almost any other sector in, in the uh, retail world. And unfortunately, you know, that's going to drive prices up as well. Um, you know, roofing alone went up 5% last month year over year so the you know, the cost of su supplies and, and late well okay right, right i mean we can't get a lot of the supplies we were getting out of china we can't get those right now and there's all kinds of uh, embargoes and tariffs that are being put on that have really driven the cost through the roof okay so. well we've been talking today with steve and kid boshkin of uh, boshkin properties among a variety of things talking about Housing in Davis as uh, summer 2020 ends and fall 2020 begins. Uh, Kit and Steve, thank you very much for appearing on Davisville today. Bill, thank you very much. Yeah, it was great talking with you. I'm Bill Buchanan. This is Davisville on KDRT LP 95.7 FM. Thank you for listening.